What's up? Good morning. Hello. Good, good afternoon. Good evening. How's it? Oh my god, my my hand was up there. Apparently, we're not streaming on Microsoft Developer because we don't have the right key. So we need to fix that. Everyone <laughs> is on the forty-five zone. I, we haven't tested it for a while, and therefore I was expecting everything to work out of the box, but uh, they probably rolled the keys. Good on them. Please roll your keys. And we're out of Microsoft Developer. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. We have our friends and audience here, so it's, uh, it's all good. Code with Son is already here uh, watching us. Nice. Good morning, everyone. Sutton, how are you? I am well. How are you? It's, it's actually... Uh, Kind of warm here in Chicago today for once. It's uh, I think going to be above 50 degrees here, so I'm going to try and go out and get some sun before the winter really officially hits. I feel something, like we keep something. having these moments. Yeah, we keep Global having these warming. moments. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> hey, I, I'm still wearing shorts when yeah. I go outside, and my wife like you're crazy, but it's <laughs> it's mild. It's like 50. Yeah, yeah. It's December, mid December now almost, and it's 50s. And for people who don't believe me, I'm still wearing shorts and. The, the temperature in the house is 68, so in case you're wondering, like, ah, it's 72 and, you know, cranked up, it's not. It's uh, it's average temperature, so enjoy the nice weather. It's not even raining as bad. Like, Seattle has been fairly mild. Yeah. yeah. Go outside. Enjoy the sun. Yeah. So Have I'm going to try and do that. Yeah, I'm going to try and do that before, because usually January and February are, like, the worst months of the year. I know it's very terrible in Seattle as well. Um, so, I'm going to, yeah, it's, it's very dark and dreary. It's not necessarily that, it, that it's super cold. Yeah. It's just the lack of sun, I think, right? And it's super, super dreary, right? So I don't know. Thing. I'm in a basement <laughs> working all day, so it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I want to mention the matching outfits. We, yeah. we did, we did uh, text each other before the we show did. to make sure that we're coordinated. We did. We did. We did. So, yeah, thank you, Hannah. Shout out to Hannah. Hannah uh -huh. sent me yeah. all of the, the swag. I had asked her about it. Literally, I think it was about this time last week, so it showed up less than a week. So there you go. Less than, and you're off next week, right? Uh, I'm around Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't. I'm not taking any time off until. Well, I call it Christmas Eve. Eve. The 23rd is when I'm I'm off, and then I'm back the third. Nice. Yeah. Everybody deserves a little bit of time off. I can see Bolt is already off. Uh, I hope he's enjoying his. Uh, is it your Christmas holiday? Uh, Bolt, are you taking time off for Christmas? I hope you are. So you, uh, we'll see you probably in 2022 at some time point. And Col uh, Sean is saying, yeah, um, Hannah is awesome. Everybody she knows is. Hannah. She is. She is uh, and then, and then Bolt, I, I do not have matching shorts. We have not coordinated on the shorts front yet. So we'll, have to, <laughs> we'll have to get to that point, right? Uh, yeah, and sh socks. Socks and shorts <laughs> next time. We promise we'll do be we'll do better. So we can't let our audience down. Uh, and uh, Trooper, Trooper says afternoon. Hey Trooper, we hope you're well. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, we're probably gonna do this stream. I don't know if we're gonna be able to squeeze another stream before the end of the year, but I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no. So we'll see, we'll, we'll see, see how it goes. Maybe, no. maybe a festive one. I am streaming on Sunday, by the way. I'm talking about uh, Secure DevOps and probably nice. cover a little bit of today's stuff. But uh, I'm going to do some demos. I think Code with Son has already seen those demos, so Son, you don't have to jump in. <laughs> That's part that of the best of tech calendar, right? It is. It is. Uh, I was trying to, uh, like, I sign up for random stuff. It always happens. And then I said, Son, do you want to jump on the stream with me? It's uh, on a Sunday, 11 o'clock. No pressure. But I'll yeah, be solo I'm driving. Not, it's fine. Conflict. Otherwise, I would have done it. I, I spoke last year. Uh, Son has a life. Started... Yeah. <laughs> I spoke last year and then this year I was transitioning roles. So I was like, I'm not going to focus on it this year. I'll focus on it uh, next year, I suppose. So, but I've been, I, I, uh, I've been catching what I can. Mm -hmm. And I know that usually there's a good recap at the end of the month. So there's all, all kinds of good content. So uh -huh. uh, props to Gregor. And I think it's Richard. Richard and Gregor tend to run it, or run it right, I think. It is. Yeah. yeah. So props to both of them for putting it together. Change the color on the lights because it looked very yellowy screen. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's fine. Uh-oh. It's, uh, it's LEDs. You can change the lights uh, to your heart's content, which is beautiful. Do you use the Elgato? Or what, I what do you use? It. I use the Elgato lights, and they have an Elgato strip. Did you know they have a strip? So somebody was telling me about the strip recently. I have not looked at the strip. So It's good. Put it like right in front of you, or what do you do? It is behind my desk, so it actually hits the wall, and then the light um, flashes up the wall. Oh, so it's just like when you have your DSLR camera and you've got your little bounce thing. The yes. I forget what they call it, the yes. shutter box. I don't, I don't know. I, Something I'm like terrible, 
yeah, it's you, you put it on the flash and it bounces off the ceiling and yeah. gives you a more natural look versus flashing it directly in your face and everybody looks really, really pale. <laughs> Christos blames the light for his looks. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate that. I, I even I even trimmed my beard this morning to look uh, presentable to you guys. Come on. I was gonna say I feel, I, like I feel since, since I've been on the team, your beard has gone, gotten longer. Are you are you trying to grow a COVID beard or you just it's just a, naturally? I have a beard for forever, forever for like for the last three years. It looks it looks bigger. It looks like it's been growing though. I'm getting fatter, so probably my fa <laughs> my face expanding along with my beard. It, it how's that even, even possible? I'm recruiting <laughs> for a triathlon. How's that possible? <laughs> how, how's it possible I'm getting fatter? I'll tell you. I'll tell you all about it. It's super easy. You just have three meals and uh, you hit 40 and then whatever you eat just stays with you forever. Oh, I know. Yeah. Can you uh, save the middle of it? Oh, like two. Oh, yeah, you should. I see. You should. I mean, everything is possible. But I'm hiding so many stuff in here. Like I have a... A chicken leg, when I get hungry, just pull it out. Uh, there was a guy on YouTube that had a really long beard that curved up, and he was oh. putting all kinds of stuff in his beard, like ramen noodles and stuff, and I'm like, this guy's nuts. Mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. that's a little bit too much. But, uh, you know, for charity, I'm willing to to do whatever you want with my beard. <laughs> How about that? We'll throw, throw some money. Throw some money. Be beard snacks for the win. Exactly. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> concealing all the all sorts of stuff. My Kindle when I travel. <laughs> a small Surface Duo, right? Um, what are we doing today? What are we doing? We are gonna talk a little bit about OpenID Connect and GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions. Well, yeah. we have talked about GitHub Actions quite a bit, and. Um, in fact, let me share my screen because we've done some work with GitHub Actions before. Where do you want to be located, situated? Do you want to be here? How should we do it? I don't know. We could do that. That works. Yeah, that works for now because we're not coding anything. Uh, let me see. Let me open the window. And then ah, GitHub Actions. And then Azure Login, which is one of the, the GitHub Actions. Uh, Actions. Oh man, they still oh, haven't done it. Show the uh, the full screen. I'm not showing the full screen. Oh uh, yeah, I need to go. Oh yeah, look at that. Fine. It's kind of weird. It is weird. It's truncated. There we go. There we go. Uh, see, so what we did, uh, like GitHub Actions require. Yeah, Trooper, we'll wait for you. Be right back. Uh, GitHub Actions require you to uh, to be able to authenticate against the the cloud solution that uh, you are uh, deploying to. Right. Azure is one of them, obviously, and then there are different ways of uh, authenticating. Today, we're going to be talking authentication, the new stuff, but up until this point, there were probably two options. One was using a service principle to authenticate to uh, Azure, and then as long as you had the right permissions, RBAC permissions, you could use that service principle to authenticate and deploy your resources. The other option, which uh, me and JP worked on, was to uh, extend the Azure login to allow you to use a managed identity login. So you could run your agent in a VM. So you could spin up a cheap VM that has all the, the artifacts because in some cases you want to build things that are not available as part of your uh, GitHub action. Although right. I, I have to say that I will be extremely surprised if there is anything that you can't install and uh, deploy in your, on your agents. But for that scenario, let's say you have some dependencies that cannot be part of uh, the hosted agents, uh, you could use a VM. Now that VM, if it is running on Azure, you get the benefit of having um, a managed identity. So we extended the Azure login to use that managed identity to actually authenticate to Azure and deploy your resources, which is awesome. But wow. uh, that's still pending merging and I need to pester these people. If you know the, these, uh, these guys, let them know that there's an awesome PR that is requiring pending. It's been 14 days and nobody has looked at it. Don't let me uh, don't let me call Nat. Although Nat has left. He's left. So here's here's something interesting. There, there's an internal and external GitHub too. You might be able. To, I, I'll I'll send that to you because they might be able to find the people and involved. Internal. I think all, all these ones are working uh, outside of Microsoft, so I couldn't find anyone on our. Oh, um, okay. I couldn't find anyone on our Gal, so I suspect that it's either GitHub, that uh, which could it's, be. Uh, GitHub, GitHub developers. Right, right, right. So I need to find the right resources on GitHub to do that. But we are cool. 
So uh, today we're gonna look at the new stuff, right? Because uh, service principles and mass identities are great, but mass identity requires you to spin up a VM, so it doesn't right. scale as well. Right. Service principles do scale well, but unfortunately you have to maintain service principles. You have yeah. to rotate the keys, you have to make sure that everything is working. Also, I don't know if you, uh, if you saw that, but I was looking at, because um, I was restoring my demos the other day, so let's uh, clear this. So to create a service principle for uh, for GitHub, you need to do AZ SP, uh, sorry, AZ AD SP create for RBAC. And then you need to give it a name and a, and a role, but you also need to say dust us SDK. What was the, what is the um, is SDK author thing? I think that's what it is, yeah. And then this creates a, so, but it says SDK auth has been deprecated. However, I couldn't find a flag to uh, do AZ I SD. Still, I think it still works though. It still I'm works. Not sure what it's going to be going forward. Don't, don't look at my secret. I'm just kidding. I'm going to do this screen, one. Screen, screen grab this and try it now. <laughs> <laughs> try to log in. It only has access to my uh, identity demo RG. So, ha, jokes on you. Always provide list privilege. But, what I'm saying is that the only way to create a credential that you need to pass into the GitHub action is doing this command. And now it has been deprecated. So I'm curious to see what they're going to replace it with. Yeah, um, I feel like. We're developers. We only care about errors, not warnings, future deprecations. Exactly. Pfft. Kubernetes, fuel snubble. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, JP is not around. You can't trigger any of us. Any of us. Yeah, it's, I, still, it's still in the documentation, so I suspect still, until yeah. it doesn't show up there, we're fine to use it for a bit. AZADSP delete. Let's see what the command is. And while I'm doing that, Sana is going to prepare her awesome um, links so we can start working on uh, GitHub Actions with uh, right. Service Principle. All right, okay. Correct. Please. So. The, this is the actual link, so I'm just going to paste it in the restream chat, right? Mm-hmm. It says SP, uh, that service principle with that ID does not exist. I'm pretty sure it does. Let's see. Take it off the parameters ID, here. Somebody service needs... Principle. Ah, it needs the object ID. I could change my name, too. It says host. I'm host. Oh, it does? It does. I'm new to Restream. I uh, have done a lot more with StreamYard. Yes, I, I know. Test. So, uh, but anyway, so I just shared the link in the chat. We're going to follow that link. Okay. And there's also a corresponding link on GitHub as well. Uh, yes, there is. So one. let me You're grab right. that. I feel like both of those tell the tale. And then once we set this up and get it working, We'll share a more automated way of Yes. Doing. So we'll show you the hard way before we show you the easy way. <laughs> yeah. And I, I struggled through this too. So I'm sure if you, you know, going through it once, if you're only setting up one of these, it's probably fine. Right? Mm -hmm. But you're probably going to be setting up more of these and you probably want to automate it. Yeah, I agree. Automation for the win, right? Yeah. Now, we don't want to mess up with, uh, we don't want to mess up with a repo that, um, is important to us. So I'm going to, I already have a repo that does some stuff. Uh, and I usually use this for my DevOps demos. This is an ASP.NET Core app that um, uses Key Vault and has no secrets. You've probably seen this awful app of mine because I'm not good at designing stuff. And then it has two actions here. Uh, and the main one is using the standard uh, out of the box Azure login, whereas the other one is using the remote one. Remember we talked about the managed identity? Check this out. Enable managed identity. So this is pretty cool. Pretty Jason, cool. not YAML. Sorry, guys. GitHub Actions are YAML, but we're not going to start this debate about <laughs> YAML, JSON, XML, and what have you. Uh, it is what it is. So we have to work with that. I know. I know. At right, least it's so, not XML. Is that one I can say? Can I say that? I think JP would appreciate that. At least it's not XML. At least not XML, but JP, for some weird reason, enjoyed XML. This is, well, he did, how about this? He did and he didn't. He's a little tongue-in-cheek about it. <laughs> I, I think he, he dreams in XML. 
Yeah. <laughs> I like that Bolt was like, beat me to it. <laughs> we know JP way too well. So shout out, JP. You're probably, I don't know. Yeah, shout out, man. Watching stream. <laughs> he's, he's not responding to my text. So I think that that's our friendship done. He's got new friends now, you know. I wonder if he's watching right now silently and then he's got a new alias that he's going to come and... Uh, bah, nah, nah, it's fine. He's going to start he's gonna start trolling us some random... Yeah, exactly. Right so let me uh, let me see. We need to navigate to my project, CD ASP. Okay. Because we want to do it in, in probably Visual Studio Code, right? Yeah, I think uh, that's probably... So that's where I wound up doing all of the, the work originally. You don't have to if you don't want to, friends, but I'm just saying. Also so, true. Right. Uh, so we want to copy this one because I'm lazy, and then we're going to paste this one. And then we're going to name it OIDC. Man, that took forever to uh, copy. Oh, you need to reboot your computer? No, please. In the middle of the stream? <laughs> I, uh, Let's I, not. I was going to say, for, for my camera this morning, I pulled the USB out and put it back in. It saved me the hassle of having to reboot it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know sometimes, sometimes this happens. Dream in XML, dream, dream. Oh, look at that. Code with Sean already came up with, uh, uh, you need an XSLT to validate that XML, Sean. So uh, I would give you uh, five out of 10 for effort. <laughs> and then you need the other five for the XSLT. Not with his normal. Yeah, that's what I was saying, uh, Bolt. If, if JP was to come and troll us, he would probably use some random name. <sighs> I don't do XML. Well, it's not by choice that we have to do XML, is it? Also true. Okay. So do you want me to open those links and uh, follow along? Or yeah, yeah are you I, think gonna... that works. I think that works. Um, so we're going to use uh, a GitHub right. link? Is that what you're saying? Well, I used the... So the GitHub one is actually fairly short. All uh, yeah, are. I know. The, I, I think, think the, the Azure AD uh, one was better, right? Correct. I think because more of the work is done on in Azure Active Directory. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's so true. Do you, do you have it? Do you want me to post it in the chat again? Well, no, but we can find it, right? I mean, that's the whole point. Also, so uh, Azure AD Federated Identity Authentication and then GitHub. Is my Google Foo going to uh, provide? It's Bing Foo, sorry, it's Bing. I use Bing, by the way. I know, I know it is weird, but I am using for the last six years or five years since I joined Microsoft, I've been using Bing, not because I had to, but because I find that the results are better. And people are like, boo, I'm leaving. That is, is not the link, my friend. That is not the link? No, no type in not. OIDC right. in your search. Maybe, maybe it needs OIDC. Just needs OIDC. Folks, oh, I see, I see what you're saying. playing along at home, this is a newer <laughs> feature. And I think OIDC. that's possibly what we need to add in there. Or maybe that's not, uh, no, I don't want the work link. Uh, connect GitHub and Azure maybe? That's why, don't I, why don't I just do this? Oh, uh, there you go. Learn how to use Azure login. Uh, oh, there you go. Yep, you got it. You got it. And notice okay. the public date. It's, it was published this month, 12-3. Maybe updated this month, I guess, because it's it was, so it was out for a month, right? Yeah, it's so new. <laughs> it is so new. So uh, I, I say we do... Uh, we could open do identifier portal. connector. Fuel Snabel is asking, what is OIDC? OIDC uh, is a open, open ID, ID connect. Yeah. Open ID connect. <laughs> Simon was about to do a let me Google that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I still had the link open. I was going to paste it in the chat in case you needed it. It's all about speed. So it says, <laughs> if you do not have an existing application, register a new Active Directory application and service principal that can access resources. As part of this process, make sure to register your application with Azure AD. Uh, should we do this? Because they don't... Okay. Let's jump to this link. Fine. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's, it's totally your call. Check Azure permissions... God, this is... It's a lot. Yeah. All right, let, let's ask the audience. Do you want uh, the CLI script or do you want the... or do you want the picture-driven one? I guess it depends upon who the audience is, right? When system, system administrators say, you know, gooey, gooey, gooey all day. <laughs> True. I should be my... Should be, should be nice. That, that's my background. Um. <laughs> <laughs> 
your developers are going to say automate the crap out of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say let's go with the. We can do, we can do the uh, the AZCLI. I think that works. Yeah, man. I'm 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 AZCLI all day, every day. I have so, gotten so much better with it too. So I I PowerShell was my jam for and uh -huh. still is my jam, right? PowerShell and ARM templates, right? Yeah. I have done more with Bicep and I've done more with the AZCLI, and I feel like I'm starting to get okay at it. I don't think I'm like a guru, but I'm starting to get okay at it. So. No one is a guru. Okay, so I have the wrong account. Always check the right account because this will do it in the wrong subscription and we don't want that to happen. So AZ login. Now you can be more explicit and say I want to uh, sign into a specific tenant, but I'm going to just use my work account. Dangerous stuff. And uh, I'll create my tenant there. AZ CLI, but you try to get Copilot to write it. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. By the way, I don't know if you saw my tweet, but uh, I have been developing for the last week. Weird. It's not even my job description. And Copilot well, is I, extremely it was, scary. It was either that or I was going to have to do it. And I have only done console apps. And you don't want me to write a console app when we're trying to make something that's accessible. On yes. <laughs> you, you will see what we built in, in few, January. In January, in a couple of weeks. But in the meantime, I was building a web app. An actual web app, a production web app, not just a demo or a POC because I, I usually stop there or we usually stop there. This was an actual, it's, this is an actual working solution that we had to publish somewhere. And Copilot was extremely efficient and extremely scary to the point I was like, it's writing documentation for me. It was writing the readme file, not even code. It was writing the readme file and it was very accurate and very eloquent as well. It was describing what I was supposed to be doing. Um, I don't know where it was pulling it from, but it was very efficient. That sounds very, very magical almost. Yeah, I was talking like, about... Like, like a Harry Potter wand or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like I was talking about service principles and master dentist and when you should use what. And it was e efficient. So um, very few changes while I was actually creating a readme file. Not to uh, mention code. And, and for the code, it was spot on. Whether I was doing JavaScript or .NET, man. That thing was flying through, right? Okay, so we are, no, I don't want right here. Exit focus mode, right, copy. And then we're going to uh, come here, clear, and then paste that. Display name, definitely know that. GitHub action uh, OIDC. Is that descriptive Ooh. enough? I think that works. There's no way you're gonna get confused as to what that's for, right? <sighs> yes, hard time. so we have that, and then we have to create a service principle at the back of that. Maybe we should put them side by side. Yeah, we'll oh, probably... that, that, if that works, yeah. yeah. This should work, yeah, there you go. And then we have that. We need to copy the app ID, which... So the... Ah, uh, fine. So, the, you know, the script is like, okay, where's the app ID coming from? Unless you know Azure CLI, then you have to... Scroll up and grab it. I know that was the thing. I was like, "Uh, where is this again?" <laughs> <laughs> we can always improve the documentation. I know, I know. Uh, so we're creating the service principle that corresponds to that uh, app uh, registration because we need to assign the permissions to that service principle account. And I'm pretty sure they have some app ID here as well. Signy so object ID. Oh, they have uh, object ID. Uh, create a new role assignment. By default, their all assignment will be tied to your default subscription. Replace subscription ID with your subscription ID. Well, this one has been created to the right subscription ID, I hope. Okay. Uh, yep, 72F9, which is my default one. If you have multiple subscriptions, you don't have the right default one, you need to pass the... Um, the set your context. Yeah. Uh, and we are creating this as a contributor. Yeah. Uh, so this will be a contributor to the whole subscription. Um, I don't know if you want to go down the route. Uh, usually we prefer not to, but if you well, need I to create you familiar with it, it's not it's not a bad thing to create it at the root. Then that way you get familiar with the flow, and then you get a chance to go in and revise permissions for the service principle. I get I get why the tutorial does it. Uh huh. That's probably okay. not what you want to do in production. Correct, Amendo. Don't do that because it's overprivileged. Unless your uh, 
you're creating brand new resources, new resource groups that uh, you have to. Otherwise, if you are if you scope it to a resource group, you need to have that resource group already created and available to you so it can be assigned to. Right, so that, that, that should be all we need. Just thinking about it. Okay, so far so good. First steps, all working. Woohoo! Uh, now, we need to run the following command to create new federated identity credential for your Active Directory application. This is a typo over here. Take notes, Sanon. Let me get back to that. <laughs> Where, where's marketing when you need them? Like, I know, those, those are easy to change at least. Yeah, this is my marketing, uh, oh, uh, you know, uh, OCD because branding is everything in marketing. And then, you know, you see these things like, oh my God, who approved it? Set the value of credential name to for reference later. Um, set the subject, the value of the defined by your GitHub, depending on your workflow. Okay. Aha, I see. So we need to... Uh, oh. This is... This is where I foobarred and uh -huh. I was panicked. I created the post call uh -huh. or the post request. I guess it's not the call, right? It's a request. I'm still learning all of the right terminology. Too, oh, so, so we need to create a new federal identity outside of here. Okay. So correct. That's the yeah. First so, so so you're so you. I mean, you can do it in the portal if you wanted to, but if you're following the ACCLI, uh -huh. the only way to do it right now is to create a post request, and you're mm -hmm. hitting this specific uh, URL. Endpoint? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's when you're passing it in. And of course, I foobarred this because I didn't quite understand the flow until uh -huh. I until I kind of put it together. And then I was like, oh, I get it now. I see. But for that, you need to be authenticated already, right, to do a, a post. Well, yeah, so you would be, uh, this is where it gets a little tricky. You uh -huh. might need to install the GitHub CLI. I don't know if you have that installed. I do have it. GH, let me clear okay, this. Okay, so you got it. So that's... That's literally all it's going to do. It, it should, uh, I think, if, if I remember correctly, it prompts you to log in to GitHub. Okay. So beta applications, uh, what is the this? Is this my tenant? Where are you? Did you, you went to a different. Uh, well, I'm here. Uh, oh, sorry, HTTP request, there we are, sorry. Yeah, so so it's on the, um, the GitHub, so the, it's Once looking for GitHub e space rest and the method is post. So if you if you go to the federated credentials part of the tutorial, okay, um, it's actually add... down there. So there's a couple things you have to replace. You oh, this one, AZ rest method. Correct, correct. Ah. and so so that's the <laughs> goes to show you. I learned a lot about the requests and what happens with the post request when I when I screwed this up. So yeah, so you, that's the only way to access the endpoint. Oh, I see. And then you just so then you can you can change the environment, you can change the audience. So like so for instance, if we're going to do this like a pull request and maybe committing something to the main branch, we'd okay. have to create two of these federated credentials. Right. So let me let me should it Notepad. Should we do yeah. Notepad? Uh, I, that works for me. I mean, I, I do a lot of scratch stuff on Notepad. And then what's funny is when I don't reboot, reboot my computer for a couple of weeks on end, I'm like, what was I doing over here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So it says it needs the application object ID. Yep. Is this the federated identity? No. So this is the service principal. Is that the I one that we need? I believe so. Let's double check here. So replace application object ID with the object ID. From your Active Directory, it should be Azure Active Directory. Active Directory application. Yeah, so that will be the object ID from. Yeah, because remember, you're not passing any sort of credentials in. True, true, true. You just need we the passing... object ID, the subscription ID. Uh huh. Well, let's find the. So the object ID for the app registration is this one. Okay. So no, that's the app ID. We need the object ID, which is. Uh... Well, you also need the app ID in this call. You need the app ID, the object. Oh, it's ID, the app ID. Okay. Yeah, so, but the... the, uh, the uh, 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 it says, replace application object ID with the object ID of your Active Directory, not the app ID. Correct. I think you also... <sighs> well, you, well, how about this? You might need the application ID as well. Um, okay, well, let's... Uh, let's uh, put it there. So we have OBG ID is this. App ID is uh, app ID up here. 
We'll we'll try both, friends, and then we'll see which one works. If it doesn't oh, work, yeah, so the, the in, in the documentation, the application ID is supposed mm -hmm. to be the object ID. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. Does so that make sense? The, yeah. Application object ID. So we need to replace that. Yep. Okay. And that would be the object ID, as it said. Put it here. And then it does say credential name. We'll just give it a name. It can be anything. Yeah. So ah. it, it could be, you know, OIDC federated credential. I, it doesn't really matter how you want to do it, but uh, yeah. Okay, issuer blah, and then it says subject repo organization. So we need to pass the right values there. Uh, I suspect you do, don't you? Well, so that's not the the pieces that you that you adjust are in brackets. Ah, right? okay. So I don't in that think case, you can change that, but um, you can I always. I feel confident. Yeah, so we so we can we can try that out, and I think that should work. Right. I'm holding my breath now, and I am doing it. Fingers crossed, toast, toast, toast. Ah, yeah. Write request, extreme delete, must contain the content type header declaration. So where is, let's see. <clears throat> Interesting. Is it because I'm using a PowerShell within uh, Azure CLI within PowerShell and doesn't like it? Good question. That I don't know. Um, okay. Write requests must contain the content type declaration. Well, let's find out what that means. Uh, uh, request. Uh, see, these coming from PowerShell, so I wonder if that's the. Interesting. Okay. So Could I need to use. Fun. Command line with Azure CLI? Is that it? Command prompt. Oh, right, it's been a while you since. Have GitHub this. installed there? Uh, I think so. Okay. If not, what we could do is we could uh, uh, always pivot to the automated version of this and kind well, of. Well, it is installed. Sorry for the the wall of green. <laughs> AZ account show. I want it to be matrix C on my demos, but I don't know how. Well, it's signing with the right user. I think it's saying, okay. um, no, I don't want that. We need the previous one, which is on our scratch pad. I like how Notepad becomes the scratch pad. I like it. The only problem with Notepad is it doesn't save automatically. For that, I use, oh, definitely an error message. <gasps> No con oh, you know what? No connection adapters for graph. What? Here's a truck back. That is an interesting error message. Yeah, so I know when I was going through some of this, it's a little, pa little, little painful. You need the AZ CLI mm -hmm. plus the GitHub CLI. I have and them both. I tried it with the, I tried it with WSL. Mm -hmm. and I got the problems with that. Got a little squirrely. Uh -huh. Got everything sorted. Um, and I think what originally like fixed everything for me was going through the automated way that, um, is it John mm. Galand? We, 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 we could do that. It, it might make things a little easier than that way we could. Yes. Uh, or because or. If, you, if you grab his code from his GitHub repo, mm -hmm. you get, um, oh gosh, I am so new to all this. Was it? No, Doug? it's fine. But I don't want to jump to Galand yet because okay. that would be the way to fix it. And then. Technically, we should come and fix this demo because if, like, if this documentation does work end to end, then there are bugs there. We need to fix them. So yeah. in the meantime, I'm going to jump onto the portal. Give me, yeah, because I, I was like, once I, so the way I did it was I tried the ACCLI, ran into uh -huh. problems. Uh huh. Then I did John Gallant's, and I, uh -huh. I walked it end to end through, kind of walked through the code, looked at everything that got spun up. Right. Then I was able to do it in the portal, no problem. Oh, okay. So maybe yeah. So maybe we go to the go to the the portal to begin with. I know. Damn it! Damn it! It's, it is I was, so new. I was so hopeful. So close. So new. Well, so now you know why I was struggling. I was like, "What is going on here?" Yeah. We should, we yeah. should flag and make it a little easier for folks that are trying to spin this up. So register your application with Azure. Create that. We've done this. 
Wait, wait, what? Oh, you add federated credentials. Okay, open subscription. Correct, and that's what that post call is doing. It's adding a federated okay. credential. That's why you're hitting the GitHub. Open endpoint. subscriptions. Oh, for the subscription ID, okay. Yeah, so you need your application ID, your tenant ID, and your subscription ID. So the application ID is the object ID. You need your directory ID and your subscription ID. And I think okay. somebody had asked where you get the token. You get the token by providing those three pieces of info. Mm -hmm. Federated credential. That's what gives you the token. Okay, so if we come to our, so we need to go into our app registration. Okay, yep. and then we'll find the latest. God damn, I, uh, you know, I, I like the fact that they tell you that you have to uh, fix your. Okay, we found our uh, service principle, and now we need to go into certificates and secrets, and then under here, at the very top. This would be a uh, federated credential. Okay, good. So now we need to add, uh, GitHub Actions is the only credential currently available. It's fine. We accept that. So let's add a credential. And then, oh, I see, I see. GitHub Actions deploying as resources. I love Correct. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think this uh, makes sense to go through maybe, maybe the portal now. Uh, GitHub Actions, okay, that's fine. Uh, you mean go to so it's four to five? Oh no, no, it's no, no, it's, it's wherever your it's your organization. I don't know what what uh, is it. Seem Simatskas. Yeah, okay. My organization, mine and mine alone. Repository. Our repository is. Um, I need to go back. Okay. Do we need to do anything with this uh, document, or we don't need this? No, uh, I'll, that's I'll open a new. GitHub. Yeah, that's just the GitHub documentation. I thought it was nice to have, but I think uh -huh. that the the Microsoft documentation does it a little bit better. Does it better? I like it. Yeah, the portal at least. Well, well, it tries to because as we found, there are issues. Yeah. <laughs> I have issues. There's a song about that. Now there's an entity type, and we are selecting environment. Oh wait, is that is that the one you did the repository in, or did you create a brand new repository? No, this is the existing repository. The existing one. Okay, all right. Yeah. So it says entity type. We need branch, pull request, tag, and environment. So we start with yeah. environment, right? We we need two. So yeah. So the ones that I have done, um, uh -huh. I've done the PR and I've done the branch. Oh, you did. The I branch. haven't done okay. environment yet. That's branch the one name. I haven't done. Yeah, I think my branch name is main, but okay. yeah, it is main. See, I I renamed it. Oh man, do you remember that debacle? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. And you know what's okay. crazy is there mm -hmm. are I, I think there are older um, repos that are gonna they're they're working on trying to figure out a way to change it and not screw up the existing code base. I think everybody's changing it. It's just if, if your repo is super old, mm -hmm. you've got to factor in what that migration path looks like. Okay, so do we need issuers here? Do we need the issuer audience? Ah, it's defaulted. I yep, like it. Yep, oh, yep. nice. It's okay. all hard coded, thankfully. Perfect. And we'll show you how to do it with the command line. But in the meantime, yeah. So um, hit hit add, add, and this will do for the the PR, and then no, we did the uh, we did oh, the, the environment. Let's yeah, do one so, more. Okay, and then I think you need one for the the PR too because uh, the yeah, we'll want to commit some code and have an action happen, right? Yes. Uh, I think it was this. Perfect. And they type pull requests. Then uh, name OI. Oh, oh, see, I see. Give it a better name. PR, and then we'll leave everything else as optional. So we're good here. Done. Okay. Okay. Now you should be able to go to your GitHub repo. Uh huh. And you should be able to add the three secrets in. The app ID, the director ID, and the subscription ID. Okay, this is the one that you do here, right? That's the next one. Correct. Client ID, yep. tenant ID, and subscription ID. Okay, so the client ID, I hope, is the, the, uh, ID. the client ID here, the application client Correct. ID. Correct. Yep, yep. I well, love the actually, consistency. Hang on. What? Let me, let me double check one thing, only because mm -hmm. it got squirrely for me. Remember I was telling you about that? Oh, I do. So I hang do. on. How can I forget? Let me, let me double check what I have on mine, the working one that I've got, because I uh -huh. feel like that's the one we probably should mirror it off of. I forget. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. 
Oh, that's right. You can't. You never mind. You can't see a secret after it's been committed. Nope. All right. Well, let's let's try it. Worst case, we have well, it says yeah, client ID, so we'll find it. Okay. Yeah. Worst, worst case scenario, we'll go. Love it. Yeah. New repository secret. And we need to name it Azure Client ID. And the value will be. I am missing a. There, man. Where did it go? Too many browser windows open. I only have one. Where's my other one? Where'd my portal go? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I need to, yeah. It's like, I need to merge them. Okay, good. So we have the client ID. Let's dump it in here. Now we need uh, one more, which yeah. will be the tenant ID. Let's make sure we capture the right name. That, and then we need the tenant ID, which is here. Or you can find it at the root of your Azure ID. Yep. Add the secret. And then finally, we need one more repository secret, which will be our subscription ID. Yep. And that is usually a little bit trickier to find. So uh, back to our Azure, then home, then subscriptions then this one um, we're talking about the ui yesterday right some things we could not uh, access to all right okay so we have that we're getting closer hotter and hotter yep. uh, set up yeah. azure login with open id connect authentication correct and now for that we need file. to switch to the code yeah the yaml file uh, sorry, sorry, it's YAML. Ah, uh, well, it could be worse. Could be XML. It's also true. Bam! Half the audience now is gone. <laughs> <laughs> JP's ears are turning uh, red this morning, or he's yeah. <laughs> so we need to add permissions. Uh, it, just for people, it's in the same doc. So I'm just gonna copy that, and then add them to our. So technically the, the GitHub setup and the Azure AD setup are all complete now. Yes. And we have to just change the uh, run on, okay, and then this. Uh, I think there's an extra space here. Oh no, oh, that's how they have it. You know what they say about spaces and YAML and tabs. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm not gonna mess with it. And then next we have to say steps, name OIDC, uses as a login, and enable PS uh, session. So we are going to replace this with this. OIDC login to Azure Public Cloud with AZ PowerShell. I don't need PowerShell, so let's remove that. So it still uses the Azure login, the yep. standard out of the box login, no uh, magic here. It is referencing our secrets. And then we're going to say false for this one. And then, fingers crossed, we have everything we need to actually run it. Yep. Uh, so now we'll commit now. it. But I think one of the, I right, go back to our GitHub repo, uh, which is here. I think we need to disable the other two uh, actions. Can we disable them, if I remember correctly? I think so, yeah. Uh, what, what are the ellipses? Does the ellipses do anything? Disable, yeah. Disable, there you go, okay. Oh, yeah, sorry, I recently disabled. had to go through some of this stuff for the AZ400. I had to update my cert. And it's you, uh -huh. largely mostly GitHub actions these days. There's still some Azure DevOps, but. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting to see the switch. Ultima Nick says, what's up, guys? You guys are the best. Thank you very much, Ultima Nick. We appreciate the kind comments. We're doing uh, GitHub Actions today with a new OpenID Connect uh, connector authentication to allow us to remove secrets from our app. As you saw, the only secrets that we created were Azure, um, Azure AD tenant information and subscription ID yep. uh, information, which are not secrets, by the way. We're just storing them as secrets because this is the only way to share them with a GitHub action. Yep. 
Yes. You could actually uh, pull them from keyboards. And uh, I've got another action that shows you how to do it. Um, so if you don't want to store them on GitHub Actions, you can also store them in Keyvault and then, and then use an action. But you have to authenticate to Keyvault. <laughs> so you still somehow have to authenticate. Uh, it's a, it's a catch-22, right? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so technically you can't do it without uh, passing some kind of information. You could hard code them into your action if you wanted to as environment variables, but... Yeah. Um, Probably not what you want to do either. Probably not because... Uh, I mean, they're visible. They're not secrets. They're not secret yeah. secrets. But um, it's information that might as well live in a secret behind and outside your code. Yeah. I see Exegate.io is uh, here with us as well today. Hey, man, thanks for joining us. Uh, assumption that uh, he is a man. I apologize if I made a mistake here because <laughs> they know what they say about assumptions. Right. So with that change, uh, we have our code updated. We just need to commit this one. So let's come here. No, I was here. Uh, git status. Did I not save this? Uh, oh. You're in the portal. Oh, no, I'm in the wrong. What portal? No, I'm not in the portal. I thought you were. I'm oh, no, the... I thought you're not. That's right. I you're was right. in the wrong repository. Got it, got it. Git add. Git commit. New. GitHub action that uses OIDC for auth and then git push. Oh, why am I not? Okay. Uh, git push main. Uh, I had some change somewhere there. Oh, oh. Oh, did I, you know what? I know why because I go to readme and I update it so I can kick uh, a build and. Uh, I was like, yeah, you've already updated your remote. You need, to, uh, you need to be comfortable with Git. Right. That means that if we go back to our repo now and we look at our actions. Uh, what? Merge, branch, what? What is it saying? Main OIDC YAML. Oh, there were some changes in valid workflow file. Oh. Oh, he doesn't yeah, like error it. Error in your YAML syntax, line error 35. In YAML syntax. Why? Oh, why? See, this know. is why I think people hate YAML, is if you have one too many spaces or not enough. Mm -hmm. So is it, uh, so I suspect that it's, this is the problem. Did it say 25? No, I, th I thought it said 30, line 35. Is that what it said? Most likely. Uh, let's go back and find out again. Why? Oh, why? Uh, or line 35. Okay, so line 35, you know, Use YAML file. Azure login at v1. Line 35 is this. Uses Azure login. This is very... Uh, you know what? Yes. That was the problem. Oh, is it one, one to me this is over? Yeah. You gotta love YAML. And I always feel like YAML oh, JSON oh. edit YAML submit. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. You can actually, <laughs> you can actually put curly braces here and then make it proper JSON. And JSON is a valid YAML, but I'm not. I'm not doing that. So git push. There's a whole thread from Donovan Brown that he was mind blown about the fact that you could do that. It and fixed YAML. You know that can be that can be going for the next half an hour. We come back and we fix the YAML, and we push it, and we fix the YAML, and we push it. If you check my commits on the other project, you'll find out that my uh, my GitHub action took a while to get it done. I am not. Christos is YAML beast master. No, no, no. That should be the hashtag that trends on Twitter after this stream. Yeah, that would be scary. Can you imagine all the requests coming to me saying, hey, uh, I see that you're the YAML master. Can I ask you something? Uh, Full-time job. Yeah, uh, so if you want, to, you want to click on the build, this was kind of cool to see. It's it's sort of like... Oh, oh, we authenticated. Yes. So that part is done. Yeah, so um, expand out that uh, the, the carrot. 
the little, uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, check this out. Oh, this is it's pretty cool. It's easier for machines to tell you that it's wrong. You should see my custom policy pushes. Oh my God, yes. So now it's actually deploying the Azure template, which is a web app plus um, some SQL server stuff. And it's doing incremental things. So it shouldn't take too long. Uh, the website gets overwritten. But the important bit is this one. We made it work. We did it. We did it. So no, while this is working and while setting up the, uh, the ARM template, so you deploy the ARM template and now it's uh, deploying the code, which is great. And it's pretty cool. It doesn't like something. Uh, let me see. Oh, you know what? Because I updated to .NET 6. I updated my project .NET 6, but I did not update my target framework. Oh. Well, so, hey, at least we proved you could log in, though, right? And I this think This is that a very was valid uh, error message. So yeah, in that, case was, people that was the biggest cross of error, right? Making sure you are, can yeah. log in. So uh, if you want to fix that problem, I did change to .NET 6, but I did not update my GitHub Actions. And then there's a GitHub uh, Action task in here, and it installs .NET version. And as you can see, I pass a variable. And that variable right now is sitting at five. So you can change that to 6.0.x, I think. And it will try to find the right one and then fix the build task. So I know why it's happening. Ultimate Nick, please do not trend that on, on Twitter. Please don't <laughs> start that. If you do, I will retweet it. How does that sound? <laughs> and I will like it, despite the fact that I can't do it because I'm a compulsive disorder. Like, I need to like it. Tweet that includes me. Uh, okay, now, before we hang up, uh, Sam, do you want to share your screen or should I, uh, I show people uh, what uh, John Gallon has done? got it from? open. If not, I can, I can find it. I, don't, I just want to have it open, unfortunately. I didn't open it up. So as you can see, uh, I'm a regular to John, Gall John Gallant's um, repo. It's one, one of my, in my history. It's, it's always there. So John Gallant is a fantastic person. If you uh, haven't seen him, if you haven't seen his videos, he's got a, a great YouTube channel. And he explains things very, very well. He does. Um, I used a lot of his Postman content yes. when I was trying to figure out how to hit REST APIs. Because guess what? You have to hit REST APIs nowadays. <laughs> if you would have told me I was going to be doing this five or ten years ago, I wouldn't have believed you. And here I am acting like a developer more and more each day, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so he's got a few attempts there, like GitHub setup, Git credential helper. But the important bit is that he went and created a script for you to do everything that we did and we you know jumped around and we're trying to set everything up he's got a fantastic cli script that does everything from the beginning to the end in fact it looks at it does like error checking and makes sure that you have the right account and then it checks for an existing subscription and it checks for existing um for existing uh, app registrations uh, it gives you prompts whether you want to use the right subscription and then it goes and creates but the meat of the the action, especially what we were stumble we stumble across, is this one: the Azure REST method that calls uh -huh. into the the GitHub uh, CLI, and then it creates the token for you. Ah, so this is the actual action. Yeah. All here, we did that in the UI. So this is what it does, and then. It takes that information that it retrieves from uh, earlier on, and then it dumps them as GitHub secrets into... So so this part is the only part that you need the GitHub CLI for, Correct. if I remember correctly. Everything Correct. else is yep. happening on the Azure AD side of things. So the, the GitHub the GitHub, um, the GitHub CLI is only for that part, but it's handy to be able to do it end-to-end -end without having to worry about the individual components. And one he thing, also, sorry, I was saying, one, one thing to note is if you use his code on GitHub, he's got a dev container and that has everything you need on it. So if you really don't want to install this just yet on your machine, you're trying to figure out how to pull this together, right? You don't have to. You could use his repo and it's got dev container and that actually has GitHub, uh, the GitHub CLI, the AZ mm -hmm. CLI. So it's less stuff you have to try and troubleshoot and work around. I wanted to throw that in there. That's a very good point. He also explains how these things work. Um, so if you really want to know the intricacies about what the order of things is, I mean, I told him to put numbers there. He forgot about that, but it's fine. John, if you're listening, please put the numbers. So you can show the order of operations, but it does matter. And then he does have a great video. So uh, YouTube, um, 
Sadcom.com. I'm sad. I'm looking at the 45 show. John Goland, is it? John Geo, maybe? Yeah, and I'm, I'm sharing the uh, links in the chat. Oh, you are? No, oh, that's, wait, not, yeah. that's not the right one. I just put it in the chat if you want to grab it. Oh, you did? Nice. I did, so, yeah. So that way... You're that one way step is, ahead of me. Uh, I, yes, I am impressed. this time. This time. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, he's got a great video that shows you how to set it up and when it explains what the script does. So if you don't want to read and you prefer videos, then that's that's what you need to do. Yeah. And that means that now with this capability, you don't have to have um, service principles lying around with yep. secrets all over the place right. and having to rotate the secrets and having to manage the service principles. If you are watching the stream, I have already deleted that service principle, so you can't mess with my, uh, my subscription. But um, yeah, it's good practice. So all OpenID Connect is awesome because it opens the door for so many uh, other things. Yes. Uh, and that takes us to the top of the hour, it which uh, is impressive. We managed yeah. to wrap everything in an hour. Yeah. With yeah. the guidance of my co-pilot here because he's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like uh, I learned quite a bit about this as well. Um, and I was just telling Christos earlier in the week, when I was customer focused, I dealt more with identity. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of moved into a role where I focused on it, you know, kind of sort of, it wasn't my regular go-to, but now I'm getting back into the realm of identity full time. And I, I, there were things that like kind of clued me into where I was getting tripped up. Like I have Azure Active Directory logging set up for one of my tenants and I had all kinds of errors in there when I was trying to get this set up. And I forgot that I had even done that because I did it so long ago. So uh, there's so many, so many interesting things you can learn about setting this up. Yeah, so now we can uh, we can do a lot of damage on on our Azure subscription, and we don't have to have credentials. I love That's it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll try to put a blog post around it, maybe uh, showing how you do it end to end, and link to John videos and John's uh, repo. Um, and we're glad that you are all still with us because it's been a while since um, we did a stream. So boldly saying thank you for coming back or we're glad that you're back we are back we're back with a vengeance and we promise you in in january you won't be able to get rid of us because we have so many activities <laughs> and same for the coming months so yeah. uh we're gonna if see you don't, us. yes yes if you don't see if you don't see us before the holidays uh happy holidays everyone merry christmas happy if you're holiday. celebrating christmas and uh stay safe yes and have a great week yes and with that oh you know what I remember this time. We're not going to go until we raid someone. So let's raid whoever is online right now. Uh, how do you know you. how to do that? I know what it is, but I'm glad you okay. know how to do that. I can show you. So here, I'll show you live on the show. How about that? So the way that it works is you can, you can still see my screen, right? I can. Yeah. So uh, you need to follow people. Right now, uh, our channel doesn't follow that many people. We should follow more. But per when I use my personal account, I can see a lot more people uh, online. And then we do have our C Sharp Fritz friends. You know C Sharp, right? You know you know Fritz, right? I do. I don't know him personally, but I know of him because he's of come him. in and has helped out a lot of people getting familiar with OBS. And he's uh, he's doing some software development today. So let's uh, let's read him. And in the meantime, oh, stay safe, everyone. And we'll see you stay soon. Stay safe. Happy holidays. And that takes a while for the stream to go. So it's like this awkward moment. <laughs> okay, right now. And graphics and outro.